You like that stripe? Mm -hmm. I like it. I haven't decided yet. Maybe it's just a color scheme that you don't often see up here in the mountains of Georgia. But it'll probably be nicely in place in the islands. Don't you think, honey? Yep. All right. So now, I'm gonna get the seats in it, the oar locks on it, the mast in it, the sail on it. I'm just gonna kinda get it rigged up just to Today is the day that we are launching the dinghy. And it is 37 degrees outside. Um, I'm kind of uh, pressing to get the dinghy launched today because I'm leaving in two days to go down to the big boat to uh, work on replacing our standing rigging. And I, I kind of need to get this I just need to get this done. Uh, you know, I've put so much time and effort into building this thing uh, that launching it is kind of my closure. And, uh, you know, before I can take on the big project of replacing our standing rigging, I need to get this thing launched just to free up some mental space. Yep. So, oh, man, it feels good to have it done. Looks pretty good. This big blue bag here is the mast, the sprit, and the sail all rolled up. And I've got the, you know, the rudder and the tiller back there, the dagger boards underneath. One thing I want to show you though is this pair of oars that I've made. Let's take this out where you can see them better. There they are. One pair of eight foot long homemade oars and these are you know i didn't follow any kind of particular plans on these or anything like that i just kind of just kind of made them up uh the the looms as they're called i think are made out of one and a half inch stock uh from home depot just the standard round stuff not too shabby for for a fellow who's never made oars before um they you know these pieces are epoxy together there's a coat of epoxy on the entire thing and then there are five layers of varnish over the top of that i made these leathers here uh, this is to protect the looms where they go through the oar locks and uh kind of funny this these leather pieces here i got from uh <laughs> actually cut up my old briefcase to get that leather yeah, all right. Well, anyways, just wanted to kind of show you the oars. Okay, so I'm going to get this thing uh, broken down, load it up into the trunk, and take it over to the lake. Truck is loaded and ready to go. Wow, that is a pile of crap in the back of that truck. Holy moly. Well, I guess the inflatable would take up probably even more space than that. 
uh, albeit in fewer pieces, but all right, ready to roll. What day is it, Tammy? Dinghy launching day. Dinghy launching day. We have a truck full of dinghy that we're hauling to the lake. Okay, don't look. Don't look, don't look. He's going to reveal the name. Dun, da, da, da. All right, you can look now. Bonnie. Oh, oh, that's sweet. Grandma's so name. Happy. That is so neat. Bonnie. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 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 don't you go after me. Okay, just got everything unloaded from the lake trip and I am overly pleased with how well this little boat sailed. It did very, very well. It's already got its uh, its first scuffs and scrapes and scratches and stains. Uh, that's kind of heartbreaking to see, but you know, what are you going to do? It's a white boat. So whatever, it'll give it character, right? Let's see, other, uh, other little takeaways here. Um, the oars. You know, I did try using these oars. I think they're gonna be okay with a modification. I think I'm gonna to have to shorten these guys up by at least a foot. Uh, you know, that'll make the oars easier to store. Hopefully it'll make it easier to row. So yeah, that's one thing I'm probably gonna to have to change. Um, what else, what else? Oh, the motor. That is the same motor we took through the Bahamas. It's a four horse, four stroke um, outboard, short shaft, 15 inch, I think. Um, it is too heavy for this boat. Uh, and not only is it too heavy, I think it's too much horsepower. What happens is, you know, you start giving it throttle and, you know, at about half throttle, the hull stops accelerating and it doesn't go any faster. And then you go from 50% throttle to 100% throttle and your speed may only increase by, you know, five or 10%. And it's just, it's a, it's a whole lot of weight to haul around that we really don't need and can't use. So I'm probably gonna have to get a, uh, a lighter motor. Oh, the name. Let me explain the name to you. The name, as you saw, 
is Bonnie. And uh, I did go through the correct uh, channels for having the boat named this. I submitted the name to the naming committee, a.k.a. Molly, and she did approve. The name Bonnie comes from my grandmother on my mom's side. Her name is Bonnie. And in addition to being a, a great tribute to my grandmother, I thought it was also fitting for the ladies. And the ladies are very beautiful, and the word Bonnie also means beautiful. So that's kind of some thoughts behind the name. Yeah, and I think that's all I can really think about saying about it. It uh, feels really good to have it done. It was an awesome project. I really enjoyed building it. I could see possibly even building another boat in the future. I enjoyed it so much. But uh, what I'm really looking forward to now, and I'm sure you would concur, is seeing this boat being used in the Bahamas. And we're going to make it happen. Just you, watch and see. Oh, hang on, just a minute. One other thing, I, 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 hang on a second. I wanted to share the total hour count. If you add all these up, this is 271 hours. That is how long it took me to build this dinghy. That's including mistakes and rework and stuff. I would bet if I were to build this dinghy again, I could probably do it in about, I'm gonna say 150 hours instead of 271. You know, just because uh, I don't have to stop and figure things out. I know how to do all the lofting. I won't make as many mistakes. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, but anyways, the total hour count, 271. Now, the oars was an additional 25 hours on top of that. So if you add the oars on there, it'd be 296. So anyways, just wanted to let you know that. And finally, I will close with sharing one more special thing with you. Stand by. Throughout the process, I've been keeping track of all of the costs on this spreadsheet. And I will share this spreadsheet with you in the description of the video. Um, there's a lot of ways you might be able to do better on the cost, maybe. I feel like I was pretty selective, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you might be able to build one of these dinghies for maybe... Maybe... I kind of feel like you're going to be between like $1,300 and $1,500 no matter what. But you can probably get towards that $1,300 range if you're really, really picky on, uh, you know, materials and shopping around for really cheap stuff. Maybe even using some used things uh, like, you know, the the rudder hardware, the pentels, the gudgeons, the, the oar locks. I mean, that kind of stuff was really expensive. I spent a lot of money on that hatch. Okay, I think I think that's it. Wrapping up this video now. I hope you enjoyed this video series. I really enjoyed building the dinghy. Thank you for watching. That's it. See ya. Wait one minute. I'm sorry. Sorry to do this to you one more time. I promise this is the last one. Okay. Uh, I wanted to mention something to you real quick. This clip is coming to you about two weeks after the last one you were just watching. But anyways, uh, there were a lot of people in the comments that were telling me they were concerned about the one-piece rigid rudder that this boat had. Um, basically, if we were sailing along with that original rudder and we hit something underwater, it would either it would do damage to the rudder, the transom, the pentels, the gudgeons, you know, something like that. Basically, something would break. Um, what I have done is I have built a rudder that now we can hit something underwater and it won't break, I hope. This is what you call a kick-up rudder, and this was made from the original rudder with the addition of these, uh, these side pieces here and a bolt for the bottom half to pivot on. So now, basically, if we're sailing along and we hit something, the bottom half of the rudder swings up out of the way and prevents damage to all of that stuff, okay? So, that is, uh, that is one little thing that I've been working on. This is revision B of the rudder, and uh, there may in fact be a revision C, uh, you know, in the future sometime. There's still some, I have some ideas of ways I, I might just completely rebuild this thing. But anyways, the main thing is I wanted to let you know that I was in fact addressing the concerns of, uh, of having that one piece rudder, and I did that by making it a kick up rudder. That is it. That is the big news. And with that, I will send you out with some rocking tunes.